Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today what we'll do is we'll go in and set up some additional automations um, for the alarm system that we're working on. There's a few things I need to cover. I also need to go through and double check a couple of things. I'll show you some things that may have changed from the previous video and then we'll set up some automations to trigger an alarm so let's play some media through our system not the way i really w intended it to work um but with this whole lockdown thing i'm a bit stuck and i can't get my things that i wanted to get so for this one to keep everything going um we'll go in and add some automations that will uh, play some sound through our sound system when the alarm has been triggered. So with that said, let's go in and take a look. Okay, so we're back in our Home Assistant configuration. As you can see, everything looks fairly simple uh, or fairly similar. And the only thing that's different is this buttons listed right here. So remember that was remote. I showed you guys how to set up the remote in the previous video. I did make a small change to that. The reason being is we use the state of the buttons. So we had it as a different type of sensor, which is going to go by the state of that button. Now, the problem with that is if we try to add multiple buttons, like I have button R and a button S right here. So if I say, for example, turn on the alarm with button R, what would have happened is it'll turn on the alarm, but on button S, I won't be able to disarm the alarm because the status is already set to locked or unlocked. So um, it does change those individually. Now, the only way around that is to actually make it show up as a on off button within Home Assistant. So what I did was in my configuration.yaml file, you can see this is the exact code that I use. So it's exactly the same. The only thing that changed was the platform. And then in here, I added a additional states for on and off for these buttons. So basically, it's exactly the same. I just added in a few lines right here and then changed it to a switch to the switch platform instead of a sensor where it was previously just shown as a sensor i made it a switch now what the switch will allow us to do is set up automations that will trigger the both of the buttons instead of just one now according to this if we do edit our automation that i set up in the last one if we go back in here to automations both of these will work exactly the same so if we go in and say arm home this is for a button R. Remember, it shows Ryan, so it's arm home for one of the buttons. Everything is exactly the same in the first part. Now, in the second part, in the actions, I have two actions. So the first one is if I if my button state goes to off, meaning that I switched the alarm off or on. In this case, if I switched it off, it's also going to call a service and switch off the button of the other remote that I have listed as well. Now, if you add more remotes, you'll just go in and add that exact same. So you'll duplicate this exact same command or exact same action to all of the remotes that you are using. So in my case, I'm using two. So I just said, um, if this button states turn to off, it also needs to turn off the other remote before then also arming the alarm to away. So fairly simple, it's just the additional action that we added in after we changed the type. So I can demonstrate for you guys how exactly it looks. So I have both of these remotes listed right here. So if I press one button, let's go in, there we go. So if I press this button, as you can see, it turns all of them off because I have them both listed. So now if I do the same on the other remotes, there we go. And as you can see, it turns them both on and off, even if just one is being set to on and off. And that's really a very necessary step if you are planning on setting it up this way. So with that said, let's go in and take a look at setting up the automations for um, Home Assistant to play some sound through our media players that we have listed fairly quick. So if we go into the configuration round here, we just open up our automations.
I've already set this up uh, previously, so what I'll do is I'll add a new one. So I can just show you guys exactly how to set this up. I'm going to skip that. It's going to ask us to enter in all the information we need to set, say, alarm triggered. Um, that's just the name of the automation. You can name it um, according to what you would like to have it. I think I have it already listed in here, so I'll just rename that trigger. Um, it's going to be uh, when a state changes, so the state. We select the entity, so it's alarm panel control house. It's definitely this one. And if it changed from, I'm going to leave this blank. So it doesn't matter what it changes from, as soon as the state is set to triggered. So as soon as that status is set to triggered, so as soon as the alarm triggers, we need to do the following action. So what we'll do is we'll say call service. And then right here is a lot of information. So we have all our entities listed, but we're looking for media. And right here, you see we have media player. We have a bunch of items in here. The one we're looking for is media player play media. So as soon as we select that, it's also got, going to ask us to select the entity. I only have two listed. I'm going to use the living room speaker for now. And then we need to enter some service data. Now, before we continue on this, there is one thing we also need to do is we need to download a sound or a type of media file that you want the speaker to play. So in this case, I'm just going to use a standard alarm. So what I did was in your hasio.local config to have the media to, to be able to play the media. Right here, I have a folder for www. If you don't have it, you can just create a new folder in here called www. Then I have sounds right here. And then you see I have one in here that is alarm.mp3. Now you need to remember the naming of this. And as you can hear, that was very loud in my ears. As you can hear, it does play some sound in there. So that's just for an example setup. Yeah, you can set up your own sound or download your own file to add in here. Now, the code that we're going to use, it is a bit different. Um, so right here, I'm just going to paste it in and I'll leave this in the description as well. So right here is the entity ID. We need to include that again. So it's just the name of the entity you'd like to play it on. If you wanted to play an all your uh, media devices you can say all in here and it should play it on all of them then in the media content the id you're going to need to type in the address the location so in our configuration remember i added this right here so that sound is in the sounds folder and then it's alarm mp3 then right here we have the media content id so in here, we're going to add in the location of the file we want the uh, media player to play. Now, this could be something on the internet, so a file you have on the internet. But obviously, I want to keep it local, so that's why I downloaded the file and added it into that folder. One thing to keep in mind is you need to add in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. It doesn't work with hasio.local. I've tried it. Um, it just does not work. Then local is just going to point to that www folder that we have in there. And then sounds is the sound folder, like right here. So we have the www. This would be the local. And then in the sounds folder and then the name of that file. So as you can see, alarm.mp3. Then in media content type, it's an MP3 format. It's an MP3 file, so we'll just leave that right there, and that's it. So all we need to do now is we hit the save button, and that automation is going to be active. I'm not going to enable this one right here because I already have one. Um, I'll just disable this one. As you can see, if I edit this one, it is exactly the same one um, with the exact same information. I just don't want to have that triggered twice. So in order to test this, we need to arm our alarm and then trigger it to see if it is in fact going to play that in our system. So we're going to click on arm home. While wait for that, I need to find something that I can trigger. There we go. I have something right here. So once that is armed, 
and the state of the alarm changes to triggered. So currently the state is pending. So I'll also show you an additional one you can add in here that will say uh, you can add in a text to speech, for example. So, but let's test this one real quick. I'm going to open up a window. And there we go, as you can see. Now, obviously, there is a few additional options you can add in with this. Um, let's just this on that. And I don't want to make a lot of noise. It is fairly early in the morning. Um, so there is a few changes we can make to this. So one thing we can do is we can set the volume first. So what usually happens is going to be the volume that the last person used it, it's going to use that volume. Now you don't necessarily want it to be on that volume, so what we could do is edit this automation. So once we're on this page, all we need to do is we can go in and add a additional trigger before we um, trigger the alarm to set the volume to max volume instead of it playing it in the previous level. So if we go down to this automation, we just add in an additional one. You can just click on add action and it will add in an additional action. Now we need this to happen before it actually triggers the alarm. So what we'll do is we'll just push up just to add it above the current uh, one that will trigger that um, music. We select the service and then say media. And then if we go a bit down, there's a media player volume set, not volume up, volume set. We're going to set it to a specific volume. Then we select the entity and that was the living room speaker. So I'll go in here and select the living room speaker. And then in the service data, I have something right here. So again, entity ID, we're going to use exactly the same. So media player living room speaker and then the volume level. Now one is max level, so it'll work in point incremental. So um, one would be the max level. If we add in point one, it means it's going to be at 10%. Point two, 20%, point three, 30% and so on until you get to one and one is the max volume. Once you have that in, you can go in and hit the save button. There we go, this looks a bit better. So I'm going to set mine to 0.3, for example, which means that's 30%, hit save. And then when we execute this, we get that to test it. There we go. And as you can hear, it's set at 30%. So if we increase this, um, let's just wait for that to finish real quick, or I just need to stop it. So what we'll do is we can increase this to 50%, for example hit the save button and then trigger it and it's going to be a bit harder. There we go. So so as you can hear, it is working um, exactly as intended. So I would always recommend um, if you are going to use this to play your alarm sound or worn out or um, send a warning to everyone, um, the best way of setting it up is always make sure you add in the volume first and then add in the trigger to play that specific level. So right here, if I go down, I have a test one in here. If I edit it, it's fairly simple. This is an additional one. So a different type of um, notification or just a basic setup. So what this one does is, as you can see, I just named it test alarm. But what I wanted to do is, as soon as you press the button on the remote to arm the home so when you're arming it you need some sort of indication that it is armed which i would have also done in a different way but as i've said i'm waiting for a lot of stuff so i had to improvise so with it improvise um uh, this could be just a notification telling you listen the alarm is being armed now obviously what we'll do is if the state of the alarm so obviously the state of the alarm panel goes from disarmed to pending. So remember, if we press that button in the original configuration, we have a 20 second period where it'll stay in pending for us to leave the house. Even if we're using the remotes, if we if we arm it away, it still gives us that 20 seconds. So if the state turns to pending, we're going to call a service and then just have text to, 
text-to-speech Google Say. So it's fairly similar setting this up. So Entity ID is all, meaning it'll play on all of my speakers that I have connected to Home Assistant. And then the message, it'll just say activating the alarm because we are busy activating the alarm. So it went from disarm to pending and then Google is going to say activating the alarm. Now, this is an easy way of just setting up anything for text-to-speech. Speech. So you can add in here any specific state that will trigger a automation, and then the action would be call service text-to-speech say. So this could be on turning on a light. You can have that set up and have Google Play, or if the light is on after a specific time or time of night, you can also have Google say that, listen, this is still on. Um, but this is a fairly simple one to do. So let's go in and test it out real quick. I just need to enable it. And then I need to uh, press the button on the remote. Let's see if I have it listed right here. So pressing the button, Activating the alarm. there we go. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, I know if I did go too fast, you can go in and ask me in the comments below, or if you want me to go into specifics on any one of these items, um, I'd be happy to answer your questions that you may have. Um, it's fairly quick. It's not the way that I wanted to set it up, but I needed to put in something just so you guys have a way of activating it on your end and setting it up so you can have that play. So you guys can have that set up on your end as well if you do need to know how to have Google play a sound on your um, Raspberry Pi or have it do a text-to-speech command. With that said, I'm going to leave you guys. I hope you are all safe and well at home, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week.